Good afternoon, Robert Scribbler. Thank you for joining me for another climate change and clean energy video blog. Now for this segment, I am going to provide for you my weekly Arctic sea ice and Arctic climate change analysis. But because there's a lot to unpack in this particular seg segment or this particular analysis, I'm gonna break this down into two segments. Now, what we're looking at is a graph of Arctic sea ice extent provided by JAXA, which is a Japanese monitor. And as, as we look at this graph, what we're looking at is the, is the red line, which is for 2018. And what we see is that from January to, to April, Arctic sea ice extent was in record low or near record low daily ranges throughout the period. But as we continued into May, June, and July, we have hit a bit above record low ranges, but still into and but still remain in historically low ranges. And I'm going to talk a bit about this uh, more and and talk about some of the features, some of the reasons why we've seen this shift into summertime. But first, we're going to drill down and, and look a lot more closely at sea ice extent and provide a better reference point by adding in every year since 2000. So what we're looking at here is a range. And, and so if you look over to the right hand side, you'll see 1980s averages through 2000 averages in the dotted lines in gray and 2010's average in the dotted line in purple. And drilling down to today, we find that present Arctic sea ice extent is not only 10th lowest on record since this record started in 1980, but also is below the 1980s average, the 1990s average, and the 2000s average. It's, slight, it's, a, it's a bit above the 2010 average, but overall, today's sea ice value is about 2 million square kilometers below the, the average for the 1980s and about 850,000 square kilometers above the record low for the day. So historically low. And, and this is notable because there's, there's a number of features that are ongoing in the Arctic. We're going to talk about that a little bit later. What I want to show you here also is Arctic sea ice thickness as recorded by Pyomass. And so though Arctic sea ice extent is, is, is relatively spread out for this time of year, despite a top 10 record low extent rating, uh, recent years we've seen closer to record low values. So, so despite the fact that the sea ice extent is, is relatively spread out, it, it's also rather thin. And, and as we see here that sea ice thickness for 2018, which is the red line, is fourth lowest on record, close to the fifth lowest line. So comparatively thinner than, than the extent value itself might, might tend to indicate. And I'm going to look at, so this is a, a map provided the, by the University of Bremen, and it's a concentration map. So, and we're looking at the Arctic Ocean from above. So this gray, gray patch here with all um, the lines intersect is the North Pole. And uh, these are longitude lines intersecting. And this line here is the 80 degree North Latitude line which in, in, encompasses the, the high Arctic or the central Arctic. Uh, purple are areas of high sea, on, sea ice con concentration. And as you shade down toward green, sea ice concentration lowers. So, so less, much less concentrated sea ice in the region of the East Siberian Sea, the Beaufort Sea, the Arctic Ocean region near the Laptev Sea. Uh, the Kara Sea has pretty much melted out and we have very thin sea ice north of the Kara Sea in the Arctic Ocean here. And also a lot of sea ice thinning going on in the Canadian archipelago 
and sea ice is rapidly melting in Baffin and Hudson Bay. So, so what's going on? Why is the sea ice relatively spread out for this time of year, despite the fact that, that we have recently tended to see record low sea ice ranges? And what I'm showing here is a, is a model run provided by Tropical Tidbits. It's, a, it's an, a visual analysis of the global forecast system model. And, and we're looking at the Arctic from above again, and all the L's that you see here are low pressure systems. And what we have tended to see is that in the central Arctic, low pressure systems have, have tended to cycle into the central Arctic and remain there. And so we've, we've had low pressure systems cycling in from the Atlantic. We've had low pressure systems cycling in from Siberia. And these low pressure systems have tended to strengthen a bit as they get into the central Arctic into the 990 and 980 millibar region. And that's, um, that's relatively strong, but it's not, not very strong as far as um, intensity. But this persistence of low pressure systems in the central Arctic creates a counter circular uh, air, air pattern. And, and these winds create an Ekman force, which, which spread the sea ice out, which kind of, if you imagine a ballet dancer that spreads their arms out, uh, they, you know, they, they slow down and the, their arms spread wider. And, and that's kind of what happens with sea ice as you, as you see these low pressure and they're cycling in, the, the ice spreads out. Now, if you get a high pressure system, the opposite happens. The, the ice tends to contract and compact and shrink. But we've had low pressure systems in the Arctic spreading out the ice. And so this makes it notable that even though we've had these very persistent low pressure systems, Arctic sea ice is still 10th lowest on record. And that's... Um, that's, uh, that's, that's, that's a pretty clear indicator that, that the Arctic sea ice is, is suffering from human-caused climate change. Now, now, looking at some other variables, just melt-related variables, things to keep account of, I'm going to share with you some sea, ice, sea surface temperature anomaly maps. And, and what we see is that there are pools of warmer-than-normal water in the Chukchi Sea, in parts of the Beaufort Sea, in North Baffin Bay, in the Laptev Sea, and expanding here north, north of Svalbard. And we've got a, a bit of a dipole here in, in Hudson Bay, where there's much warmer than normal sea surfaces on the west side of Hudson Bay, but much cooler than normal sea surfaces on the east side, which is, which is a bit of an interesting feature. Now, these warm pools of water are melt drivers, and so if you get a lot of winds driving these warm pools into the sea ice, you can have rapid melt. And this is something to look at, especially considering the fact that sea ice concentration is so low here in the Beaufort Sea and the East Siberian Sea and, and in the northern zone of the Labtav Sea here. So, so something to keep an eye on. Now, as for surface temperatures, atmospheric surface temperatures, Arctic air temperatures have tended to moderate into summer, and that's something that, that we can expect. You see strongest polar amplification, which means polar warming, and, and the poles tend to warm faster than, than the middle latitudes under human, under human force climate change, and, and you tend to see that signal stronger during the winter time because the greenhouse effect is, is, is amplified ironically during periods of darkness. And, and so the Arctic during summertime is, is a, experiencing in many cases a 24 hour day. And, and so the Arctic tends to moderate in, in relative to anomalies, relative to temperature departures, but it, it moderates the most in, in the high Arctic. And that's what we see with Arctic, high Arctic temperatures ranging average to, to slightly below average, and the above average temperatures getting pushed out into the edge zone. Now, this Arctic anomaly map is showing the Arctic at slightly warmer than normal. And as we look into the future, 
the Arctic is expected to warm up a bit over the next few days.